Hey, it's me Tim, and welcome to a new kind of video, I guess. A few years ago, when I had, um, I guess, a student, you could say, um, who wanted to get into music production, um, he actually told me that it would be kind of cool to like see the creation and progress of me, like live through either a, a video or a stream. And I guess now, years later, I'm finally doing it. Um, I actually didn't manage to get the sound stuff to work at first because uh, Cubase doesn't like work with OBS for some reason but I managed to find a plugin that I show you in a second because um, Vo, um, Vocameter, Vometer, actually not uh, quite sure how it's called um, didn't actually work for me because it kept lagging and I um, I guess I tried out the plugin before re-downloading it and uh, fiddling around with the buffer size settings and it works. So yeah, um, as you can see, uh, I'm actually on the Game Boy Sound Hardware site from GBDev. And that's because um, if you're following me on Twitter then you know that I've been working on kind of a new album, you could say, um, called I'm Hungry. This is just a placeholder album art, uh, because I just wanted to upload my newest track, Cotton Candy, right away, and kind of update um, this album as I go. And I decided to make the second track a Game Boy inspired track. And I guess first off let's start with the tech of the Game Boy actually, um, like, it has one, no, two square waves, um, one programmable PCM 4-bit channel, wave channel, and one noise channel. And the first channel also has sweep. The thing is, um, I was a bit confused because this side says that the, those are two square channels and I've seen on all the other channels that, or on all the other sides that it's actually two pulse waves. Um, the Essential Guide to Game Audio, the theory and practice of sound for games, actually had it listed as pulse waves as well. And I guess it was kind of confirmed on the same site on GBDev that it's actually two pulse waves. Um, they can either be put to... Let's see, if can I, let's see if I can find it actually. There we go, wave duty. Um, that can either be put to 12.5, 25%, 50% or 75% square waves. That's also true for the second channel. Um, so yeah, it's, I guess a pulse wave is kind of uh, like a square wave, but it's deformed actually. Like, um, let me open up paint real quick. Like a square wave is actually... looks like this, kind of. <laughs> uh, it's like uh, symmetrical, kind of. All the lines are pretty much the same length. Um, and the pulse wave can actually look like this. Or um, I guess if, I guess a 50% pulse wave would be a square wave. Probably, yeah, normal. I'm not too knowledgeable about pulse wave, but I'm not gonna get too technical here anyway, I'm gonna cheat a bit anyhow, um, but I just want to make sure it is kind of authentic, so I did some research. But yeah, let's not get, get into this too much. Um, a wave, PCM wave generator is actually, it kind of looks like this is also a programmable uh, wave oscillator, in this case it's like a VST. Um, you can like uh, change the waves up uh, you can add effects so yeah that's also a thing you can do with the Game Boy and it also has a weird panning mechanic actually um, it has either left channel all the way to the left both all the way to the right or neither so you can't like have a 50% pen to one side. This track from Bubble Ghost. There we go, Bubble Ghost. Um, that's actually a pretty good example of that. Just take a listen. As you 
can hear it like um, jumps around from the left to the right. It's actually one of the few Game Boy pieces that I um, well could remember that had that feature. And that's uh, well, actually, the Game Boy itself has only uh, one um, channel, uh, one sound thingy, as you can see here in this thumbnail. Uh, but if you can plug in uh, headphones to get that stereo effect. So I guess that's all the technical stuff I wanted to talk about. I guess the most important things to to remember is that the first and second channel channels are both uh, pulse waves or square waves. The third is a programmable wave. The fourth is a nose noise wave, mostly used for sound effects or for um, drums in regards to music. And the first channel also has a sweep. All right, let's get into it. All right, here we go. And this is the plugin that I'm using, um, Voxango Recorder. You can like um, set it to either send it to an output file or to an MME um, device. So yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, this new track is called Cupcakes. Because I guess I'm still hungry. Kind of. I didn't have a good breakfast. Um, and again, I actually just used the Google Translate function set to Japanese to read aloud Cupcakes. Then I recorded that, uh, transformed it into an mp3 file and put it in here. Here we go. I'm probably gonna clean this up a bit later on. Actually, let me do this now. Um, I have pitch warp on here. Or actually, oh yeah, it's assorted with the isotope vocal synth demo <laughs> VST um, with the com compo vox turned up all the way to the max. Okay, that's good enough. So I just added a pitch correct actually. I guess it sounds more musically this way as well. Oh wow, sounds really distorted now. Oh boy. Okay, gonna keep it. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it for now. Okay, I didn't add anything else yet, but I'm gonna do that in a second. Let's see, my favorite tool to use for this kind of stuff is, there it is, the Magical 8-Bit Plugin. It's free and it's pretty nice. There we go. Okay, um, always have to turn down the volume. Use my controller here, um, my MIDI controller to play this. problem is that uh, it only has the square wave, the 25 pulse, so I guess the 50% square wave, 25% pulse wave and the 12.5% pulse wave. It doesn't have the 75% pulse wave, but I guess we can live with that actually. Um, let's just duplicate it around, actually, okay. First square wave, there you go, takes a bit. Um, second square wave, let's actually make this our noise channel. And then we have the third channel. Um, just call it PCM for now. All right. Um, yeah, I guess we can start coming up with ideas now. Alright, a few days later I'm finally back to the project. Um, I actually got rid of the um, pitch correct because it sounded way too disordered. guess it's actually better to just pitch shift. There we go. There we go. Okay, that sounds way better. So the thing with the PCM is that I actually don't know if it can be changed like on the go. Um, or if it has to like stay a certain waveform that's like predetermined. Um, I think I'll just go with triangle, I guess, <laughs> maybe. For now, maybe I'll actually change it to another wave later on. I'll have to see. Um, I guess 
the thing is that if you want to make it really authentic, you'd have to like get that one um, Game Boy cartridge that lets you like use the Game Boy as an um, one of those trackers, a tracker. Um, but I don't really have that. Uh, I have a Game Boy, but I don't have a like one of those cartridges. So I'm just gonna go with Cubase, and I don't wanna use a multi tracker because. Um, well, I'm not too experienced in the use of it. Like stuff like chip tune isn't uh, really my forte. I I guess I stick to like eight bit music made in Cubase. So let's see. Um, oh, actually, I think I mentioned that um, the Ghost Bubble, I think it was called, game was one of the uh, few. Um, game soundtracks that I remember making uh, great use of the stereo feature uh, but well it was actually just uh, the only one that I could remember from the top of my head uh, there's actually the Pokemon Gold and uh, Silver and Crystal series or games actually have really great uh, stereo features or um, really great panning a really great use of panning what I usually do when um, starting out with a piece <coughs> after I got the like basics down like um, this case all the instruments um, I usually uh, decide on the form like intro then maybe a verse part uh, refrain part bridges stuff like that um, I think I wanna actually do this in an ABC form I think um, like I remember the battle theme from um, the battle theme of Golden Sun. Um, it's actually in the same form. Um, and I think uh, more pieces from that um, era are actually in an ABC form because uh, that makes sure that there aren't too many repetitions. I'm actually not sure how long I'll make this piece. Probably a bit shorter since I'm making a video. So it might end up just being one and a half minutes long. Um, let's see, I guess I'll start with the melody. Well, what I actually noticed many um, Game Boy games doing, or Game Boy game music composers doing, is actually having the f um, melody, um, a second melody, a bass, and then the drums being handled by the noise. Um, so I might go for that as well. I think um, Mega Man has more of a rhythm thing going on with the second melody. Like um, the first uh, track playing a melody, the second track um, having like a rhythm, and the third track um, doing the bass. I guess the drums then. Drums then the fourth track. Uh, I'm not totally sure though. I go for triangle. Triangle sounds like a good bass. Um, the sine wave is, is usually a better sub bass, but yeah, I think the triangle will do. Usually just improvise a bit till I come up with a good melody. So let's see. Well, the thing is that you can't actually play chords, like um, or play multiple notes on one track, like this. Um, I'm just doing it to like guess get a feel for what kind of melody or chord progression I want to do. Um, thing is uh, to work around the fact that you can't play multiple notes at once. Um, the composers like just played the notes, like the individual notes, really fast after each other. Like um, something like this would get, um, would become something like this. Well that's a uh, guess a poor presentation of how it would sound like, but um, well. Uh, but yeah, that's about how um, they got around the fact that they can't play multiple notes at once. Because if you play the notes really fast, it kind of sounds like um, a chord. I think I'll go with um, F major for this one. Actually, F Legion sounds pretty good. No, that's, that's what I did for the other one as well. Can't 
Okay, I think I got a basic melody down. It would be like... Um... And so on. Let's see. Actually, I'm just gonna play it live from my MIDI controller since that would be faster. Okay, there we go. just a repetition so let's go ahead and quantize and copy okay um let's get this sub base game okay <laughs> something went wrong with quantizing the whole thing um there we go. Okay, let's go to noise now. Um, let's see, let's make this uh, a punchier bass. Um, oh, that's an explosion, explosion sound. Or heard one positive Undertale enemy dying sound. Oh, that sounds more like a bass drum, it's at least a bit closer now. using a tracker you can usually um, adjust the sounds on the fly but um, can't really do that here so um, I'm gonna have to make multiple tracks for um, the drums um, I'm trying to make a hi-hat now oh not attack um, release there we go Not perfect, but it's getting there. That's the wrong. One, here we go. Okay, quantize, and there we go. Uh, it's like a close I had. I'm gonna make this a more open one. Uh, release. It's the wrong one. There you go. Okay, that works. Okay. Well, it sounds like music. I want to get a counter melody going. Let's see. Uh, maybe 
be a low one. Right. Yeah, that works. Okay, let's see. works. Okay, let's see what we have. Yeah, let's get a like a polka rhythm going or march rhythm. Actually, I want to have this in an extra. Oh, well, never mind. Let's have it like this. Um, let's make this in like the transition. Size this. Yep. Okay. So, Polka or March rhythm is in essence just umpa, 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 and so on. That stuff. Okay. Kind of messed it up. But just quantization for that. Okay. Okay, there we go. Um This more oriental. Let's see. Let's um, adjust adjust the lead. Actually, um, I want to have more uh, more yeah more release on this one. There we go. Um, yeah, the volume is kind of all over the place. So it like this. Okay, there we go. So that's the hi-hat, that's the bass drum, or I guess, um, kick. Um, and we don't seem to need a snare for now. Okay, um, just copy this all over the place. Change it up to A flat. Mm. 
There we go. Okay, that's basically the template I guess I'm gonna use for now. Like that's the intro. Here's the transition. And this is gonna be the main melody part, like the, the A part, I guess. I guess technically this is kind of the A part. It's gonna be the B part. Maybe I'm gonna make this an A B C D piece actually. Let's see. gonna do this differently actually let's make this an a flat major part and c major from here not okay i'm probably gonna do this in um third parallels i guess like the melody is gonna play and the second track will play So it sounds like this. Or something similar. Oh, I messed that one up. Um, I like the beginning though. So I'm gonna keep that one. This one up. Okay, there we go. There we go. I'm just gonna copy paste this and remove all the low notes from this one. ones from this one. Every time I press, uh, press save it like does this weird distortion sound thingy. Not sure why. Oh, forget to forgot to copy paste this one. Let's change this one up a bit. There we go. <clears throat> okay, I guess this is the rough draft of this part handled. Um, I think I want to make the next one a bit more interesting. One option would be to either go into A minor actually, just like that. to a minor okay 
guess the latter would be more my uh, style. It's like to alternate between um, major and minor. Let's go with that. There we go. Um, let's check if everything's actually quantized probably. Prob probably. I guess I'll blame it on latency or something. <laughs> nah. Um, let's actually make this more staccato. That would work. Well, quite a few mistakes, but that's okay. Well, it's, it's quite a restriction to just. <coughs> have three actual um, tracks that you can use for melody and chord purposes. I think I'm gonna go for E minor here after all. Maybe I can actually uh, solidify the chords with the bass a bit more. So what I did was um, actually uh, raise the bass uh, by one octave. 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 Oh boy, pronunciation. Okay, well, that sounds way better now. You can fill it up with a few kicks. <laughs> Nah. Oh. Let's actually make this transition a bit smoother. Something didn't sound quite right. Now I want to get the bass going. Let's see if we can actually transition this into
to a G major chord or G dominant seventh. Well, okay, that kind of works. I'm gonna have to do some fine tuning there though. Let's take another listen before I take a another break. <laughs> There we go. Um, I think I'm actually gonna make the next part maybe more Mega Man inspired with the rhythm and all that. But um, well, I guess the track isn't really fast enough for that. Mm, but I'll think of something. All right, time for another break. So, hey, um, well, something awkward or a few awkward things actually happened um, I guess first of all I forgot to um, that you can't actually see the windows uh, if I open up effects or if I open up the VST windows uh, because I've been only recording the Cubase window so now I'm recording the whole screen meaning that you will be actually be able to see everything but I made sure to uh, blend in the like what the VSTs actually look like when I talked about them in the previous um, instances of this video. And another awkward thing that happened is that um, my magical 8-bit plugin VSC actually died and I can't reinstall it. Um, like it, Cubase just doesn't want to recognize it anymore, no matter where I reinstall it to. So yeah, even after downloading it, uh, redownloading it from the website, it doesn't work. So I went ahead and got the Papu VST actually. It's a free VST that's, um, well, therefore emulating the Game Boy sound. And I actually might like this a bit more. Um, while the eight Magical 8 bit plugin is better for like overall 8 bit music. In my opinion, um, this one's actually, well, more realistic if you're trying to make actual actual Game Boy music. It even has that like um, panning thing that I talked about where you can only either go to no channel, the left channel, only the right channel or both, uh, which is what a Game Boy, the Game Boy system could do. Like it couldn't have 50% uh, pen to one side. It was either all the way, both or nothing. So yeah, um, thing is this only has the um, pulse waves. Um, so I still have to figure out what to do with the PCM. Actually, I think I'm gonna use one of my favorite synths uh, or tools or VSTs to create your own synths or simple synths at least. So I guess I can show off that too, um, to replicate the triangle wave we had going. So now, now set um, oh, square. There we go, square. Uh, set both of these waves to a square wave. Um, the attack and release are at like this level by default, but I've turned them down all the way for all the channels. 
This one's also a pulse wave, but I'm gonna change this up. I wanted to mostly do fine tuning in this instant and anyway. So um, let's see. Oh yeah, and the drums I got um, were the Game Boy drum kit that's available for contact. It's also free. Oh, this also has like um, these output uh, things in like steps instead of a sliding meter. I guess that's also a thing that the Game Boy was capable of or were another limitation of the Game Boy Lite. Um, same for like the attack. Since this release tuning, I guess, is more... Well, it only goes to 48. Um, fine tuning goes up to 100 and down to 100. Um, the sweep also um, just does this in steps. And here's the shift uh, where you can like um, determine how long it uh, it takes or how far the um, thing will actually sweep. Oh no, it's actually how long it's gonna sweep. Yeah, how long it's gonna take. Hmm, weird. I guess this is so far. No, okay. I'm confused now. Uh, but yeah, you can actually also um, like add more channels, like have a 12.5% pulse wave and a 25% pulse wave playing at the same time. To get that interesting effect. Um, and... Oh, this is actually the the noise channel. There we go. Actually, I can I could uh, reuse this to like um, make the uh, drums, but well. I guess I might as well use the Game Boy Drum Kit, since it's uh, rather time intensive to actually make all these effects yourself. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure that all these sounds were uh, that you could replicate them all with the PCM uh, with the Papu, but um, it would take some time and practice. Okay, um, let's actually handle the PCM now. Um, the synth I was talking about is the synth one. Here we go. Um, here's the triangle wave. Um, no delay, no chorus, no attack. I gotta put this on track. There you go. That's a nice triangle wave. So you can also arpeggiate it in case you wanna have an arpeggiated ba bass, which you couldn't really, which I couldn't really do in um, the 8 bit plugin because uh, it, for some reason that window only shows up in like FL Studio. Just increase the beat. There you go. This is how I uh, made like the effect in the other arpeggio effect in um, my piece Cotton Candy as well. I think it was set to square waves though. Oh boy. Okay. Let's um, go for this. Oh yeah, I had the ring on. There we go. Okay, that should mostly be the same as it was before. Um, another thing I want to work on is actually the panning. Um, 
actually before that it would be best to actually take care of the drums first so let's search for the kick okay, let's go with this the G uh, problem is we can't actually take any um, sound effects on that sound like this uh, this even though this would be a good kick because um, thing is that you'd need a, um, a square channel or the PCM channel for that we only have the uh, noise channel free now though so that's the problem so I could technically um, make a sound like this using the um, Game Boy Sound Engine, um, we can't because we only have the noise channel free. Okay, let's pitch all of these up to um, to G. There we go. Okay, all that's left is the hi hat now. Um, let's go for the D sharp. Okay, what we actually have to do now, we have to split this again into um, hi hat and kick because the problem now is that the um, kick is isn't low enough okay uh, I didn't get this quite right um, that's the kick oh wait oh man I'm confusing myself okay hi-hats and kicks there we go now what we have to do is pitch the kick down actually um, put a bass boost on it let's use a low shelf There we go. It's way better. Um, and pitch it down. Okay, what I did uh, was actually just add an octave below it. <clears throat> so it still has that uh, punch from the original sound, but also the bass from the lower octave. Especially combined with the um, with the filter, it should sound pretty nice. Okay, there we go. Oh, that's a bass drum. Okay. Well, we're cheating a bit by um, like using an equalizer, which uh, you couldn't really for the Game Boy. Yep, that's way better now. Another thing that I wanted to take care of is the panning because um, what many uh, games actually did was um, having like the main melody in the middle, the bass all the way to the left or right. Um, I guess my preference is putting it all the way to the left um, and the second melody all the way to the right. Something sounds off about this. Let's put another equalizer on this because I don't re really feel the bass yet.
Yeah, I would actually have to put this in the middle because um, it really doesn't come through if it's just all the way to pant to pant all the way to the left. But we can compensate that by panning the drums. Well, usually you don't want to pan the drums, like um, or well, it depends. Uh, you don't want to pan the kick at least and the snare. Those are usually pretty well fit in the middle. But you can always make an exception for Game Boy games to like guess tickle your ears. <laughs> you want to say it like that. Um, let's see. Let's pan the hi hats at least to the left. What I'm gonna do is um, automate the uh, panning. Let's see here. Okay, I just wanna have it be in the middle when it does that uh, umpa umpa stuff. Um, but during the beginning, I want it all the way to the left because it didn't sound that terrible there. Because it's rather loud now, because all the other instruments are panned, um, I had to turn down the first square wave or the melody square wave. Okay, and then it switches to the middle, the bass that is. I wanted to do as well was increase the release. Oh, okay, so it actually kind of uh, kills this wave, like putting the release some uh, 0.3 seconds or anywhere for that matter just makes it play endlessly. Um, this isn't a square wave. Just noticed. Well, rip release. I'm actually doing this panning thing through Cubic, uh, Cubase because, um, well, I might want to automate it later. And that's, well, I could do it through this as well by, um, like, use, uh, this stuff to um, switch whether or not the left or right channel would be on but it's easier to just do this in Cubase through the padding automation. Okay um, since the release isn't quite working properly um, what I'll do instead is just use a reverb. I kind of like using Grand Chamber it's one of my favorites. Well, it's not quite as great. Oh, weird. So you have to have the attack on for the release to work. So what I did was add a, the five, five filter timeless delay <clears throat> and this kind of made it more like full sounding like um, I guess it's a good replacement for the um, release since um, the release doesn't actually work in this VST unfortunately unless you have the attack turned up stuff like this can 
happen pretty easily. Like um, like a plugin not working anymore all of a sudden, or um, a plugin plugin that you got not really working properly. But okay, I get it now. I'm not actually sure if we need one for the PCM as well, but well, let's try it out. It's actually pretty cool. Like it's a, um, a modern. I guess it sounds more modern this way, and it gives it some more space. It doesn't sound quite as empty this way. Okay, let's listen to the rest of the track now. Um, so I mentioned, actually, I just remembered, um, like the panning procedures, the usual panning procedures where you want to have the kick in the middle and stuff. That's also true for the bass usually, but, um, as I said, the Game Boy composers usually pan the bass to either side or oftentimes pan the bass to either side. Um, but yeah, usually you want to have the bass in the middle, uh, which is what I did here because it sounded a bit too empty in my opinion, otherwise. Okay, so I wanted to clean this up actually because I don't like this last note here. Um, listen to this, sounds way better rhythmically, in my opinion. There we go, it's way better. Okay, I actually like this version way more now. Um, mostly because of the delay, actually. Yeah, I guess that's it for cleaning everything up. That's mostly what I wanted to do today before I get back to my usual course. Let's hope that these VSTs don't die this time. See ya. Oh boy, here we go again. So, I've survived London there. And yeah, here we are working again on cupcakes. Um, I guess I've been working on it for like what a few weeks, um, mostly because of the London there, and um, well, because I'm actually filming this, um, which means that um, well, setting up everything is kind of uh, takes some time, and uh, well, taking time out of the day for like a consecutive session instead of just um, like um, working on it every now and then which is what I would usually do when I work on like a personal piece but well we did it okay I think I'll be actually be able to finish it this time so um, let's see uh, I've actually uh, made it a bit faster now like um, just like a second ago because I've listened to it again and I felt like it sounded a bit slow in my opinion. Um, also, um, 
well, there was a weird thing going on actually where the attack and the release were up here for all three Papu um, tracks for some reason. But yeah, handled that. And they were all under the default 12.5% um, pulse wave setting. But actually, I. Uh, that, that was actually a good thing because um, I felt like this first wave sounded actually better as a 12.5% pulse wave. It has more, more of a driving force. It's like a. Sounds more like a lead instrument this way, in my opinion. Okay, with that out of the way, let's actually take care of the last part. So, um. Like I said, I was gonna make this in an ABC form. Or, I guess in this case, ABCD form, like A or intro, this being the B part, this being the C part. Um, so, let's work on the G part. Um, I think I've mentioned that I was thinking of making it a more fast paced one, like um, a Mega Man track or a Castlevania track. Um, but we'll have to see if it will actually work out. The fortunate thing is that um, this isn't a piece for video game, meaning that I can like, put in as many weird sounding parts that don't have to have like the same mood and all that. Um, but I guess it should still sound consistent. Alright, I think I have something. Um, I actually had to insert another um, track, a piano track. Because I can't play two notes at once to make sure that I can try out harmonies and stuff. So, um, as you might know, this ends on a G dominant seventh uh, chord, kind of. Well, with this F here. Um, meaning that we have to transition back into. Oh, that's. We could transition back into C major, which is think what I'm gonna do. Um, and I've decided on a rhythm as well for this. Um, it's kind of like this one, riding rhythm or like horse galloping rhythm, I guess. Um, to make it more action heavy or more um, exciting. Um, let's start with the drums in this case. The highest I'm gonna play this rhythm. Okay, and it's pretty much gonna be an ostinato, meaning that it's uh, gonna be the same pattern played all the way, the whole time, repeated. I think I wanna have another note here. Let's make these a bit weak, or actually, let's have the kick do this and tone down. The, uh, the hits that aren't on beat. I guess I'm gonna have the PCM play the bass notes um, following the same rhythm. Sometimes I might actually uh, accidentally say B flat instead of uh, B major instead of B flat major because the thing is that um, that note is actually just called B in Germany and this one is called H instead of B so we just call this one B instead of B flat I got the um, chord progression down uh, we don't need the bass as much or like a, a Jeep bass since we have the kick for that There's our first four chord pattern. Okay, um, F, <coughs> F major seven, G, uh, minor seven, E flat major seven, um, B major seven, and yeah, let's go for the G. Um, uh, well, I guess I like this one a bit more. Um, G dominant seven. Oh boy, 
it's kind of um, difficult for me to like remember all these names because I'm not used to their um, German or uh, to their English alternatives. I only know them in German. how I'm actually choosing these notes is um, I'm picking a note uh, from the chord which um, is now already played by the bass. So I guess in the case of F major 7 I took the E because this, well, it's in the chord and it's pretty much the deciding factor to like differentiate uh, the chord from a normal major uh, chord since if I were to put this on an A it would just be um, well, we we'll just um, imply a normal F major chord. But the seventh, it actually sounds more like a F major seven chord. That would probably kill us if we were to do that in um, harmonization class because you don't want to have uh, parallel fifths. And it's not really that important for like uh, music. If you are not trying to make music that sounds like appropriate for the um, Renaissance or the Baroque age. Well, I guess. The thing is that uh, even people in the, during the classical times, romantical times, and well, even we now learn um, how to uh, arrange a piece for, well, usually four voices. In this case, it's three voices, two voices currently. I mean, people have uh, either rejected or just overlooked um, these conventions on purpose. Like, there's, I think, a piece by Mozart or something where he has like tons of um, parallel fifths on purpose to get a distinct sound. I guess I could either rebel or try to make it different. I could make this in C and have this jump to the F I guess. But I mean theoretically I well don't care about it too much except if I really want to make a four voice piece um, for like I don't know singers or a uh, brass core. But other than that it's well not really that important for me. There we go. That's the um, pretty much the melody I've decided on. Let's make it like this. There we go. Well, so let's handle the rest, I guess. Um, actually, what I really, really like doing is um, just inverting the melody. All in all, it's a uh, while well, the technique, anyhow, which is used in, um, especially in twelve tone music, where you like have a theme and then you invert it or do all kinds of stuff to it. The thing is also that uh, you still have the rhythmic material. Uh, from the theme, like it stays the same, but uh, the melody is different. Like, but it's still kind of recognizable. It's still kind of similar. If you really listen to it closely, you can kind of figure out that it's kind of the same same melody, just inverted. It's to give a closer tie, in order to tie it together with the melody, while still providing a new melody. I should probably show you what I'm actually doing uh, or explain. Um, I'm taking. Um, all the notes that are going up would actually go down. So um, in this case, um, actually, first of all, I have to see if I'm following the chords. Okay, so in this case, it goes up. Instead, I'm gonna go down from the last tone. Um, it's an A flat major. Okay. From this note, it went down. So I'm going up then it went down from this tone so I'm going up once again and so on it made a jump down so I'm making a jump up just gotta make sure that it's in the same um, like still comforting to the chords so it's not an exact inversion or mirroring actually I think this one's inversion because thing is um, again that the names in German are a bit different I believe um, 
like I think mirroring is called Krebs, which is uh, cancer, like the animal, because it walks sidewards. So I guess German terms are weird. So in this case, it would jump up to a C, but um, or around a C, but I'm gonna turn it up a bit higher to a D because this is a G major chord. The F still fits in because um, it's like part of the G dominant seventh chord. Here again, it would uh, usually go up to a E because um, it's going down from here, like a whole step. So it would go a whole step up, whole step up in this case. But um, since we are in the a G major chord, um, I am gonna turn this into an F instead which is a part of the G major 7 chord, or G major, G dominant 7 chord. There we go, <laughs> finally. Actually, let's listen to this with the first part, so you can actually hear um, the similarities that bind these two parts together in the melody, and at the same time, the differences, which make them sound like their own thing. actually change this part um, up quite a bit um, because I didn't want it to go too far down or do too many big jumps to make the um, melody more coherent. I um, also had to uh, make this an E instead of an E flat um, which I did accidentally it seems. Um, so only thing that would be missing is an outro. Um, and thing is, uh, if we are counting the intro as an extra part, we would count this, the outro as an extra part as well, making this an A, B, C, D, E form instead of just an A, B, C form. Um, I guess the thing is that I, well, I guess I could also not, not count those as parts. In the end, it doesn't really matter if I do or if, if I don't. Um, I guess most important thing is that there are three distinct parts. One um, like more like a march, I guess, um, and that is upbeat and happy. Um, one that's like the middle part, that's exactly the opposite, which is in um, in minor, and descends in half steps, and then a more upbeat, ag again more upbeat and. Um, also faster and more rhythmic part. Sounds good to me. Um, I guess all that's left is some fine tuning and then we're good to go. I'm gonna lower the hi-hats during this part because they're a bit too loud here. Let's lower them all together actually. Because thing is that since they're all the way on the left they tend to shine through quite a lot. Okay, I just a bit of reverb um, to the hi-hats since it's, um, well it felt like they were too short or that they faded out way too quickly okay not quite sure about this melody line here yet Okay, 
The B flat didn't quite fit as well because we had a B here already. Um, kind of signifying the G major instead of the G minor chord. Let's do this, actually. Yeah, this sounds more complete this way. Um, all that's left to do would be mastering. I don't think I'm gonna do too much here though. What I'm gonna do is uh, make sure that it isn't too loud. Um, what I'm using for this is the dynamic range meter, actually. Here you go. Shows me how high the error message is. Yeah, I think I like it. It's around that 12, minus 12 mark. I um, think I'm gonna add a limiter though, since it seemed like it clipped at some places. Alright, that's that. There we go, and that's Cupcakes. Um, guess it will be up on Bandcamp by the time you um, hear this or see this video. So, well, the link is in the description. Feel free to check it out. Um, guess it will cost like one dollar or so. Uh, but you can stream it online as much as you want, I believe. Um, don't think it has any restrictions on that. All right, um, I guess I might um, make more of these related to the um, I'm Hungry album because um, well, this would be a good opportunity to actually show how I work and <coughs> what my thought process because uh, behind the pieces is. Um, I think I'm gonna make a showcase of um, Cotton Candy as well to show you how the piece was constructed and everything. Alright, see you in the next video.